Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to our weekly Learning Your Lunchtime webinar. Fantastic to have everybody joining us today. And uh, we're going to be talking about time management tips. So as you go into the new year, 2022, fantastic if you can set some goals and get into your studies. But it's going to come down to the daily discipline that you need to apply. Uh, on a daily basis, are you able to prioritize the work that you need to do? Are you able to commit to getting those tasks done? Are you able to look past the distractions? Uh, lots of other things that are more interesting and more exciting to do, even though you are spending money on a degree or you've uh, you know, got a scholarship and somebody else is paying for it. Uh, somebody is working hard to get you into your um, studying process and uh, you're going to have some pressure building up, especially around exams and deadlines and assignments. And there's something that I've seen happen quite a lot, especially in our Student Success Coach Facebook group, um, is people really asking for help, pr practical principles, um, techniques that you can apply uh, to manage your time better and get focused on uh, the critical tasks that you need to uh, deliver in uh, your studies. And these principles you can really apply to anything else in your life. Um, you know, there's uh, always projects and work that has to be done, uh, whether you're running your own business or whether you're in a corporate environment. Uh, or if you're running some sort of projects at home, uh, home improvement or um, whatever outcome you're trying to achieve, um, you know, we all need to allocate the right amount of time and prioritization uh, to things uh, if we actually want to uh, get them done. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this uh, webinar. A very warm welcome to everybody joining us uh, this afternoon. It's great to have you here. As I always say, once we get past 12 o'clock on a Friday, uh, the weekend has started. Um, I'll also make available uh, my time management course a little bit later on and what would be really great is if you can just introduce yourself uh let us know where you're from and then we'll get into some questions and we'll just pick up on you know the hot topics around time management and where you guys are struggling uh, i've got some examples in the webinar that i'll talk you through uh some examples of how people have actually used these principles and applied them uh, very much in a studying academic uh, context but again those principles can be used uh, in any area of life and i'll take you through some of those examples so you can actually see uh, what people have done and how they've applied these principles uh, to be successful uh, in their study so do pop a note in the chat uh, let us know where you're from and as always guys um, just make sure that you take full advantage of uh, all the benefits of the student success coach community um, there is the facebook group uh, so you can come in there and in fact some of the examples that i'll be sharing uh, today uh, are from the Student Success Coach Facebook group uh, where people have used that uh, group to drive accountability uh, for their studies and for the work that they need to do, even on a daily or weekly basis. Uh, so we'll be looking at some of those from the Facebook group, but I've also offered you there to join the Facebook group. Uh, it is a closed group. Um, I moderate it, um, but uh, there's no supervisors, there's no lecturers. It's an absolutely safe space for you to get the help from people like you that uh, are also going through very similar circumstances, struggling and battling with you know similar demands on your time um, that uh, you can get support and assistance from. So, good afternoon, Miss Ena and Lovo, engineering student at Wits. Uh, I was also an engineering student at Wits uh, 20 plus years ago. Great to have you here, uh, Rami, um, marketing student at University of Pretoria. Great to have you, University of Pretoria here. Fantastic to be here. Great that you could join us as well. Um, Tato is a political sciences student from the University of Pretoria. Happy to be here. We've got Vitz, we've got Pretoria joining. Uh, fantastic. Um, LG, hello. I'm a postgrad student, UP, studying genetics. Uh, welcome. Really great to have you guys here. And really what I want you to leave here um, today with after this call is not only access into my course on time management, but also the practical principles and techniques um, that you'll be able to apply almost immediately uh, to help you get back in control of your day. And look, it is the beginning of the year. Um, you know, we all go into the beginning of the year with sort of good aspirations and hopefully a bit of a clean sheet in terms of our priorities. But very quickly, you'll start to realize, um, you know, many other things that will creep in and uh, start to pull you away from the critical things that you want to get uh, done. And that's going to require daily discipline. There's simply no other way of getting around it, even if it's a PhD or a master's or a bachelor's level degree. Um, you are not going to be able to have a massive short burst at some stage uh, to do the bulk of the work. It's only going to be a daily discipline of habitual allocation of time to the critical tasks. Um, and I'm going to show you both the allocation of time and the accountability to drive that allocation of time, and then how you then manage those tasks 
uh, once you've decided what it is that you need to work on. Lots of Pretoria uh, joining us today. Melissa Samuel, fantastic to have you with us. Um, Pravesh is doing a PhD, University of Pretoria. Also welcome. Uh, that guy, Thizi, BCom Investment Management student at uh, UP as well. Great. So, guys, I think we've got a nice group today. Um, let's get into then just some fantastic examples um, of time management principles. So, just going to go straight into it. So, th this is um, Ramona Stemmer, who is a um, member of our Student Success Coach Facebook group. And what she's doing here is she's applying the principle of burning her boats. And really, you know, this is this idea of um, making some level of a public commitment um, and it doesn't have to be public and can be in a closed group like this one or it can be to an individual but let's just go through what she put on here which was a post uh, into the Facebook group so she's um, so this was quarter to seven in the morning so now she's woken up in the morning and she knows she needs to make the most use of her day and of course we've all been hit with COVID a lot of us are not yet going back on campus. We don't have this idea of the boundary between the home and the work or the campus. And you've really got to get control over your home life because, you know, the couch is there, the TV is there, the fridge is there, um, the distractions are there. And while those are, are nice to have in terms of being accessible to your kids and your family life, you know, those blurred boundaries are, are also something that you have to manage. So quarter to seven, Ramona wakes up in the morning and she knows she needs to get uh, in control of the day. So she says, guys, I'm burning my boats. And burning your boats really comes from this idea that um, in one of the uh, naval conquests um, hundreds of years ago, um, the ships landed on the beach and they wanted to take over that um, island. And um, the commander of the naval fleet told the men to literally burn their boats. And what that meant was that they would not then able to be able to escape if they did not take over that land they could not jump back on their boats and then retreat back uh, from where they came from and what that did for those naval uh, officers was it completely changed their mindset they had no back door they had no escape route if you like they cut off their plan b they burnt their boats uh, and that's really what it is and once ramona uh, and if you take this uh, path and apply this principle you burn your boats in the sense that once you've made this commitment, you will be emotionally invested in what you commit to. You will not then want to come back and say, gee, guys, I backed out. I watched three hours of Netflix. I didn't even get around to starting the first task that I'd committed to. And if you don't make that commitment, then it's only yourself that you are having that internal battle with. And it's going to be a very difficult psychological battle for you to win because, um, you can self-justify anything, right? You can justify, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, or, you know, the assignment's only due next Friday, um, or, look, I really need to give myself a break. You know, I've had a tough time lately. Um, you know, it's just, it's just an hour of Netflix, or, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just uh, some other activity that's not going to move you forward in, 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 in your studies. So, so she says, I'm going to burn my boats, and then she says, I'm going to commit to doing three units of her law of evidence module by midnight tonight so there again now it's a specific goal three units in a certain uh, module of her studies and then she was very open and honest and that's i really commend ramona for this and and this is again the benefit that you get from coming into the uh, facebook group i put the link on the chat there for any of you that have joined a little bit late uh, just scroll up and, and find the link and, and jump in there um and this is the safe space that you get inside that group where she says in, uh, as she goes on, I've been struggling with some personal issues which have resulted in me falling behind in schoolwork. Now, that is the same for everybody. We've all got personal issues. We've all got real challenges to getting things done. Never mind COVID and pandemic and all of the catastrophe that hit us, has hit all of us in many different ways over the last couple of years. There's no difference. We're all in the same boat. But what Ramona's has done here, she's taken ownership of it and she's put it out there and she's not made any excuses for it. She also then says, look, I have procrastinated. I know that I'm not the best at it and I you know, am guilty, um, but I want to take back control. So this is such a critical and that's why I love this example, because the control sits in your hands. You are the master of your destiny. You are the master of your time. You're the master of your 24 hours every day. You absolutely are. The fact that you're here now in this webinar, you've made a choice, you took action, you, you are here now listening to this. You do have a much higher degree of control over your time and your day than you actually think that you do. 
So, wanting to take back control of her academics by catching up with her modules starting by today, please help me by holding me accountable today. Right. So, that effectively, and that's, you know, within the first five, ten minutes of you joining this webinar, if you were to put that post, if you join the Facebook group and you put that post in the group there, you then already apply the principle of burning your boats. And my offer to everybody is to do that. If you are struggling to get something done, if you have got an assignment that you're just not getting around to, you've got something that's niggling you in the back of your mind, um, there's a saying that says you should eat frogs for breakfast. You should do the hard things at the beginning of the day. If you've got something that you're just not getting around to and you put a post like this in our Facebook group, and it doesn't have to be in our Facebook group. It can be to, to a mentor. We've got mentors in the group as well. It can be to a friend of yours, someone that's going to hold you accountable. It could be to a family member. It has to be someone or a group of people that you trust and that you then feel you've made some, form, some level of formal commitment to them. So guys, let's have a, a little bit of questions uh, in the chat. Um, please do let us know if you've got any um, questions on this. Is anybody struggling right now with uh, not getting around to a specific task that possibly would want to take advantage of this opportunity and do something like what uh, Ramona has mentioned? Uh, please do mention that. And also just to say hi to Miracle Survivor. Uh, and if that's a real uh, issue that you got through in your life, you've survived it, you're, you are a Miracle Survivor, congratulations, well done. Uh, congratulations also for being here and for taking action and wanting to get back in control of your time. And that's what we're hoping to help you with um, today. So I put the link into the chat. Um, you can just click on that, come through into our Facebook group, and you can do the same thing that uh, uh, Ramona did there. Okay, so now what happened after um, Ramona put that post there? All right, so as the student success coach, myself, Peter Alkema, and there are a lot of other mentors in the group, um, you know, me and others, you know, will play a role of trying to coach and assist people in that group and then give you that daily support and interaction that you need to be successful. So I immediately affirmed what you had done and i said look congratulations you burnt your boats we support you all the way and please give us an update during the day and then hopefully a successful update at midnight then i said you know even if you don't get all three done you know remember, remember she said three units of law right so that's what she committed to and i said even if she doesn't get all three done it's at least more than what she would have done if she hadn't burnt her boat so just don't stop today keep going uh, you get it done, and Ramona confirms yes. And then um, I think my last uh, comment there when I followed up was probably about midday, so lunchtime, just to see how she was going. But you are getting just a flavor of, you know, the interaction and the support that you'll get, you know, if you then burn your boats in the group uh, and how that then starts to support you and, and enable you to stay focused. Now, I'm obviously not advocating you spend all your time on Facebook. We run the group in Facebook. Um, but I do want to show you just the value that you get from it and the support that you will have from it uh, back into your studies. I don't want you to keep scrolling Facebook uh, when you come in to burn your boats. Obviously, that is for you to decide how much time you spend on social media. Our Facebook group is there to help you be a successful student. As the student success coach, that's my mission. That's what I, I am 100% focused on trying to achieve uh, for all of you, whether it's genetics, whether it's law, whether it's any of these uh, subjects that we've mentioned and that we've seen you introduce yourselves in uh, to the webinar um, this afternoon. All right, so I'm still waiting. Anybody wants to pop something in the group? And and you could burn your boats right now. So this is a group. We've got a good number of people here. If you are willing to burn your boats about getting something done in the same way that Ramona has in the Facebook group, you can do it now in this webinar. And we will then also support you. So if you've got something that, let's say, you thought you were going to get done this week, and maybe you have to hand it in on Monday, and you're worried now, are you going to be able to be focused on this over the weekend? You could put that into the chat now. I'll stick it up on the screen, and we will support you um, to do that. So let's just have a look. Tata says, I have a problem heavily procrastinating, especially when I have no school. I want to train myself to be productive even when I have no school work that I get used to any suggestions. So Tata, that's exactly what we're talking about today. So the first step is, is to burn your boats. And this is not a week by week or month by month plan. There's, there's, there's other planning principles you know, that I teach on in other courses about doing that. This is about getting control of your day, your 24 hours, like Ramona has done, which is why it's such a good example. 
quarter to seven in the morning, she woke up and she burned her boat. So Tato, same thing. Join the Facebook group. First thing in the morning, burn your boats. Decide what is that critical thing that by the time you go to bed at night to help you overcome your procrastination and get back the confidence that you're able to focus on the things that you need to do. What is that one or two or three things? Don't be too ambitious because then obviously, uh, you know, you'll just set yourself up for failure. And exactly why I said to Ramona there, um, I don't know how big any unit of law is that she was trying to achieve, but I just tried to break it down to say, it's not an all or nothing thing. If she got one or two uh, done out of the three, that's still something to be proud of and, and thankful for in terms of the progress that she's made. So Tata, um, my advice to you would be to join the Facebook group, burn your boats, or do it uh, right now. Sam Whaley, thanks for inviting me to this webinar, former student at UP. Okay, absolutely. Uh, great that you're here. And, um, you know, these tips and these webinars and the people I interview and the courses that I provide access to and all the value that you get from all of the resources of the Student Success Coach community are all 100% geared towards helping you be successful. I fundamentally believe that we have to have successful students go out into the world, solve big problems, become you know, economically independent, uh, contribute back into society uh, and build a better life for themselves and for all of us uh, as a country. So for me, um, as a PhD graduate and a uh, you know, long time uh, WITS student, um, I believe in the academic process. I believe in the, um, the rigor and the, you know, the necessity of um, you know, the research that we're all doing uh, in various different fields on various different topics um, to help change the world. Uh, Rami says, how do I use the remaining holiday time to prepare for the upcoming semester? Fantastic, Rami. So aware a couple of you guys still on holiday. That's fantastic. We're going to ramp up into term time um, next week. Now, um, I interviewed a lady on the uh, podcast uh, last year, and uh, we talked about exactly this. And when I asked her, and she got, I think she did exceptionally well in her first year of um medical studies, if I can remember correctly, and I asked her what the secret of her success was. And she actually said that she, quote unquote, got ahead. You know, so by the time the first lecture started, she'd actually already start, read up, you know, she'd done a couple of chapters, you know, she'd, she'd, she'd started to get to grips with the material. She didn't wait for the first day for her own learning journey to begin. So Rami, um, you know, that would be the same advice to you. If I can dig out that podcast link, I'll stick it on the, the chat now and you can go through that and have a listen and and hear what she's done uh, to help you then prepare for uh, the upcoming semester in exactly uh, the same way. But good that you're thinking like that, and good that you do want to get ahead, and I certainly wish you every success in, in, in doing that. Okay, let's go back to Ramona's story, because again, an illustration or an example is the best way of you guys learning something. I can sit and give you slides and theory, but I want you to see it from one of the people in our Student Success Coach uh, Facebook group. Um, Monique, yes, absolutely. Let's just quickly go, run through Burning Your Boats again. It comes from a story about when a navy, a fleet of ships uh, wanted to, to conquer a land. Um, I think this is the Spanish Inquisition or something like that, but you know, it doesn't really matter. They landed on the beach with their ships and they wanted to conquer this land and they had to obviously go and attack you know, the, the forces on the land. And the, the head, the fleet commander, then commanded the men to burn their boats. Okay? They, they literally burnt the boats on the beaches. Perfectly good boats. Nothing wrong with those boats. And if they needed to retreat, they would need those boats to get away. Otherwise, they'd be captured. But the change in mindset, once they had burnt their boats, meant that they had no escape route. They, they, they could not think about a plan B because there just was no option for a plan B. And what that, in, in terms of the creating accountability for you to focus on your key tasks, you're burning your boats in that you now don't, you're emotionally invested in one plan, which is to do those tasks. You don't have a backup plan to say, oh guys, you know, I've switched, I'm going to do this because you've made this commitment. You feel now that you have almost promised it. You haven't quite promised it, but you've put it out there and you're asking for help and the support that I've been showing you, you know, on the last couple of slides that we're able then to give you uh, in the Facebook group. So hopefully that, that, that uh, uh, helps you there. I also have um, an article which I will quickly dig up. 
um, and that will explain it in a little bit more detail. And uh, you can go and read um, there. It's a little bit more geared towards um, broader objectives and commitments that you might need to make. And I tell the story uh, in that article that I've just put on the chat there about a project that I was running uh, in my uh, work uh, where we had to implement an IT system. And um, I stood up in front of about 100 people and I, I said to 100 people, we will implement the system by November. And that was four or five months ago. That's another form of burning your boats. It's, it's a public declaration of a commitment that I'm making. Um, and we see it happening all the time, whether it's marriage vows or any other kind of, you know, a, a promise that uh, somebody makes uh, in public um, to do something or not to do something. It's a very similar concept. Um, there's a degree of, of shared accountability um, and there's a lack of a, an escape route for that person to get out of doing that. And very importantly, if you don't make that public or shared accountability, you have the internal battle with yourself, with your own mind. And we as humans are exceptionally good at self-justifying. So now Ramona, let's come back to this example. She made this commitment. She burnt her boat at the beginning. And now she realizes, because she's got this new mindset, it completely changed her mindset. She thought, I've, we've got 2,300 people in the Facebook group. She feels, I've made this commitment. I have to now get this done. So now she then posted uh, some you know, of this law units work that she was doing. And again, this is now the implementation uh, and, the, and the, the change in the mindset and the result of that coming through in the work that's happening uh, during the day for Ramona. Um, and there again, you know, she repeats that. And um, if I can remember, you know, on the previous example with Ramona, um, I checked in at midnight and she had done two of the three. And then she actually stayed up until I think one or half past one the following morning uh, to complete the third uh, unit. And, um, you know, while I'm not, I'm not advocating that you should sacrifice sleep, um, and if you're sacrificing sleep to make up for procrastinating during the day, that's a negative cycle. What Ramona was doing was she had a very productive day and then a very productive evening, and, and she felt energized and motivated to continue working a couple of extra hours uh, into the early, early hours of the morning. Um, but I would not advocate, you know, sacrificing sleep on a, on a regular basis. So um, here again, um, and if you come into the group, you'll actually be able to see all the detail of the post and her pictures and just the confidence and the excitement that she was able to achieve because she overcame that procrastination. She overcame those issues that she'd been struggling with, uh, which was just so positive for us to see. So here again is another example. Uh, morning, everyone. Burning my boats again. So now you can see it worked for her. And that's proof in the pudding, right? So it worked for her. So she's doing it again. I'm going to cover at least two lectures worth of work and the corresponding readings for administrative law by the end of today. Please help me keep myself accountable. Right. Go for it. At this rate, you will get your degree on this method, and that's how it should be done. So daily burn your boats. That was my uh, support to her in the comment. Task by task, day by day, everyone can be a successful student. Go for it, Ramona. Uh, you know, she's our sort of hashtag burn your boats champion uh, in the group. Okay, so, you know, we were very supportive of Ramona, and she's been in a number of our webinars, and this was, I think, an example from a year or so ago, and, uh, you know, she's now very successfully, I think, almost completed her uh, law degree, and I'm sure going to take those principles forward into the rest of her life. But, but the most important thing was she, she took action. She applied them. She heard them from me in webinars, and then she, 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 she applied them. And we've got lots of other examples um, of people who have done similar things like this. And my invite to you is to take action, join the group, and then in the next week, burn your boats in the group to get something done on any given day that you may be struggling to focus on uh, and that you want to, to, to complete. And we'll help you do that. Um, and it may not be that you need that now. It may be that in you know, some other stage later on in the year or you know, another area of your life, you're struggling to get something done and you just say, how do I overcome this? It's simple. Just join the group, burn your boats, and you'll find that you are focused to get it done. Okay. don't know if there's any other questions uh, on this as an example. Um, but, yeah, be like Ramona. Well done to her. Okay. Now, what I'm going to just share with you very quickly is my course on mastering uh, time management. 
So that is um, in the chat uh, in the uh, comments there. So you can click on that link and you can get free access into the course. Um, and uh, yeah, please do just dive into the course and start going through the lectures. And what you can see there is what you'll get in the course. Um, so there's just a bit of an introduction there. And then I go into more detail about using the principle of burning of boats um, to conquer your plan B mindset, um, achieve dramatic influence in your life and others. Uh, so there's other time management principles. I can't cover all of them in this webinar. Uh, we're mainly just going to focus on burning of boats. And then there's another one in the second half of the webinar about managing your tasks. Um, but there's other time management principles here that may be more useful to you in other areas of your life. So there's this idea of the power of the will, um, of I will. There's uh, principles and practices of the power of 10 minutes. So maybe you've just got 10 minutes to focus on something. How can you maximize those 10 minutes? Bias for thoughtful action. Uh, make action lists work. Uh, the chef never runs the restaurant. Um, so, you know, identify what role you play in whatever project uh, or, or outcome it is that you're trying to achieve and be laser focused on what it is that you need to do uh, to be successful. And then again, there's an assignment there. So very much like I've been talking about in this webinar, there's an assignment there for you to choose one of those practices, choose the burn your boats practice, you know, post in the Facebook group and then update us in that course um, about how well you did uh, in applying that principle. Uh, take a picture of the post, share it into the assignment. Um, please add it onto the introduction board so that everybody else can see um, you know, how you've been successful in overcoming um, your difficulties with time management. Uh, Rami says, how do I ident identify procrastination during the day? Well, Rami, I mean, um, I mean, you should have at least, I mean, I've got a, a, an old style notebook here, right? Where I write down the things I need to focus on. Now, I don't write in here, um, watch Netflix or browse Facebook or any of the other things that I like doing, but take me away from completing these tasks, right? So identifying procrastination, I think you do automatically because you probably feel a little bit guilty about it. And you're watching that Netflix or you're browsing Facebook or social media and you think, I really should get back to this or I really should get back to that. I think, you know, there's a degree of that guilt that you almost feel. Um, about doing something that takes you away from a primary task. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't spend time relaxing and, and enjoying, but do that as part of a structured day where you allocate the best part of, of your ability to think and to do work, which is generally um, morning, okay? And then obviously sometimes in the afternoon, but one does start to get a little bit tired. Um, so again, like I say, you know, I, I believe, you know, eat frogs, do the critical stuff as early as possible in the morning. And that's because your brain is fresh and you've just had a good night's rest. Um, and then, you know, get to that other stuff that's enjoyable almost as a reward uh, later on during the day, once you've got through those critical things and burning your boats, just, you should know what you need to do, but burning your boats helps you stay accountable to other people about doing those things. So Ramona 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 knew what she wanted to get done. She needed to get those three law units done. She had that written down. And I'm sure she had it in lots of places, right? But it was her own personal mindset that she needed to fix um, to get it done. Now, Kara Demura has just joined us here. And Kara is the lady I was talking about just now who I interviewed on the podcast um, a while back now. And Kara was uh, giving us very good examples of how she managed to use her holidays quite effectively to be quite prepared for the semester. And uh, Kara, uh, we had a bit of a discussion earlier about um, somebody on the chat wanting to know how to take advantage of their holidays before they actually get into the semester. And I gave your example of how you sort of almost read up a little bit ahead so that when you get into that lecture or you start doing that assignment, you've actually got some familiarity with, with the subject um, beforehand. So I will dig out that uh, podcast link and uh, share that with you. Um, but just to remind you that the link for the course that I've got up there on the screen uh, is in the chat and you can jump in there, enroll and uh, take advantage of that. So just to quickly touch on the power of 10 minutes, uh, this is about where you can actually create hours and hours of quality time from short bursts of productive 10 minutes. And there are a couple of principles that you'll learn in the course about how you can do that. Because the reality is, 
Um, and when you get back on campus or you're running around doing 50 million things during the day, you don't always have, you know, those blocks of time that you can spend on your assignments and your studying and everything else that you need to do. That's often why we end up working late into the night because we've got all those responsibilities and we haven't had those blocks of time available and we can only do that. We sacrifice the block of time that we put aside every day to sleep, right? You shouldn't get into a cycle of doing that. And that's why I say if, if you can take advantage of all the little 10 minutes that you have available uh, during the day, um, I mean, I, you know, and we've all got lots of examples we can talk about. I firmly believe I wrote a book and, and I harnessed many, many, many 10 minutes individually to just make some progress on, you know, all the work that I need to do to write and publish a book. And whether it's doing a degree uh, or finishing an assignment, um, where if you've got those blocks of time, that's great. And I want you to take that time back from Netflix and procrastination. But if you literally don't have those blocks of time, then the 10 minutes uh, here and there in your day, uh, you can use the principles uh, in this course um, to take advantage of those. All right. So there's a bit of an example of, of, of some other uh, students that have done the course. I feel energized and ready to conquer everything. I love this course. Uh, well articulated and straightforward. I learned how to prioritize my time and use it more efficiently to attain my goals. Okay, so that uh, course is available in the chat. And all I ask is that you please do leave a rating and a review inside the course. When that page pops up, you'll be able to give the course a rating out of five stars. And then again, also, please just leave a comment um, on, the, on the same page. Um, about the course and, and what you managed to achieve with it. And uh, yeah, Cara is just affirming there what we were saying earlier, that's, you know, you need to plan. Um, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, so a really great quote there that you guys can all uh, think about in your, in your studies. All right, fantastic. Hope everybody's enjoying our webinar so far. Now, let's move into the second half. Uh, we've sort of got 25 minutes left together and this now is a principle where you have some tasks. Let's say you have burnt your boat. So now Ramona again, she's got her three law units and she understands what the tasks are to complete each of those. Kanban boards is a very powerful way of visualizing the flow of work um, through the different stages of completion. It also helps you understand a number of different projects and areas of work that you need to be successful in throughout your day. And what you can see there behind the lady is really going from the to-do list, which again is your, is your notebook, um, to some progress that you need to make, uh, to then completing um, those tasks. And, you know, we all use sticky notes or you write something on the fridge or you write a post-it note on the side of your computer or somewhere that you need to remind yourself to do something. Kanban boards is just a slightly more systematic way of visualizing your tasks and and making sure that when you are sitting at your desk um, or wherever it is that you're working if you can see that kanban board then you can see those tasks in a bit more of a systematic way now um this comes from the japanese principles of to total quality management um and really you know we've learned from those japanese principles and applied them into you know whether it's software engineering uh, or project management and personal time management discipline. Um, the, the principles of Kanban are absolutely applicable um, to all of those areas. So let's go into a little bit um, and just show you some insights to that. So a couple of things, and these are some videos on the uh, Student Success Coach YouTube channel. So I'm just going to provide a link uh, for you to subscribe there. And of course, if you are subscribed, then you obviously always get access to um, these webinars and the recordings are always in the same place that you click to get here um, today. And those three videos that I've got listed there, the first one is this idea of the weekly status report. And if you have a supervisor or if you have a mentor keeping you going on a weekly basis, so we talked in the first half about the daily discipline, but you also need to be making progress on a weekly basis. Um, and I talked there about how you update somebody in an email or a quick status report about the top five tasks that you need to get done each week and whether you completed them or what you need to do uh, in the next week. Then cadence is uh, another important principle of Kanban and cadence is about having a regular rhythm of reviewing, reviewing your Kanban board. And you know whether it's through that weekly status report and that's on a weekly basis and throughout my PhD, I used to review my tasks every Sunday night. 
um, you might want to just review your tasks on a daily basis. What you shouldn't do is constantly be second-guessing yourself about which tasks you should be working on when. Your burn the boats should be on your in-progress column. So whatever tasks you now are in progress on and you now need to actually do the work, um, that's what you should then burn the boats on. Stuff that's on the to-do list, you have not put that in the progress column. So you have not moved that task from left to right. And therefore, you don't have to worry about it because you're not expecting yourself to make progress on it. It's only when you put something in the progress column that you then actually need to physically do that work. And um, that's the third uh, video there, which is about limiting work in progress. Only put the tasks in that middle column uh, of work in progress where you feel you can make um, significant um, progress on them and that you're willing to burn your boats about getting those done. So limit work in progress is an important uh, principle of Kanban as well, which again, um, you can learn about on the um, Student Success Coach YouTube um, channel. So Ramona, again, she's a real hero of this webinar. And uh, she then also learned about Kanban boards uh, in one of my other courses about how to beat procrastination and learn a lot more details about how Kanban boards work. But I'm going to give you some of those insights uh, now in this webinar. And she's then... Um, also separated her tasks into rows. So along, along the Kanban board from left to right, you could have categories. So you could have family, uh, studies, work, you know. So then you know in that row, you're looking at only the tasks relevant to that area of your life. Or you could have a finance module. You could have a law module. You could have some other module which all are part of your studies and each of them have, you know, a range of tasks and things that need to get done. And then you apply Kanban principles to each of those um, categories. So that's what uh, Ramona did. And in that course that she's done then, um, where I teach Kanban boards, the assignment is to make a Kanban board. And it is as simple as just putting three columns up, um, you can have a piece of paper, you can have a whiteboard, you can put it on the fridge, you can put it in your cupboard door, as long as it's visible to you on a regular basis where you can review it according to your cadence and your rhythm and possibly your uh, weekly status report, etc. Um, so there she indicated that she was quite um, excited about doing that and there is the Kanban board, uh, like we've been speaking about just now, just the three columns of to do, in progress and done. Um, and your in progress column, you know, limits the tasks that you put in there, you, you cannot work on too many things at the same time. You will lose focus uh, and you'll actually get nothing done. So limit work in progress and then burn your boats on the tasks that are in progress in order to have the mindset and avoid a plan B uh, approach that uh, relies on you justifying uh, your commitment and accountability to do those tasks. And uh, so again, lots of encouragement there for Ramona. And uh, I love the beautiful Kanban board, obviously, that she's made. They're absolutely fantastic. So make it pretty. Make it something that you love looking at. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, boring uh, sticky notes. It can be however beautiful it is that you want to make it. Um, but just make sure that each task, each little block that you put on there is something tangible, specific, measurable, that you know, is, is it on the backlog? Is it in my to-do list that I'm not actually going to be making progress on it now in this period of time? Or it's in progress and I darn well better start doing some work on that. I need help. I need to burn my boats. I need to be accountable for it, etc. Or, fantastic, it's in the done column. You put it there and that's also fantastic. You're visualizing the fact that you're completing things. They're getting into the done column and that creates a, a feedback loop of encouragement for you to keep pushing more things uh, through that cycle. And the challenge of not having uh, too many uh, tasks in your in-progress column is that you'll struggle to get things into done because you'll be too spread out. It's fine if you have literally three or four tasks in your in-progress column and you review that Kanban board every day. Then the only things you put in your in-progress column is what you need to do for the day. And you might then review your Kanban board at 8 o'clock every day or at 4 o'clock the previous day. Um, and you celebrate the task that you've done that day. You share that with us in the Facebook group. You move it into the done column and you create space for things to move from the to-do column uh, into the in-progress column. So here's an example of a law student applying 
um, the burn the boats principle to get accountability around the task that she is in progress with and needs help and accountability to deliver, and then a Kanban board that she's done as an assignment in the Kanban board's course, um, which she then also shared uh, with the Facebook group. Okay, questions, guys. Um, you know, anybody struggling with uh, tasks or needing to get organized or, or you know, thinks that Kanban boards might be useful uh, for them to manage tasks, please uh, ask any questions in the group. Now, this really just goes into a little bit more detail there about um, the three columns and, uh, as I've explained, the three columns and then what Ramon did was the swim lanes or the rows uh, which you could use for, you know, different areas of your work, of your life that you need to manage tasks. Uh, and again, whether that's family and studies and work, maybe three rows, you know, don't make it too detailed and complex. Um, you know, you'll probably still need a notebook where you have sort of smaller level individual tasks. But a classic example is like what Ramona said, a unit of law. You know, that's like a sizable task that's going to take two, three hours and should have three or four of those um, in progress for a day or two or whatever the case may be. So your ability to describe tasks and how you are able to have a discipline of moving those tasks through a Kanban board is also something that you must practice um, and that you will get better with uh, the more that you do. And again, that's the same with all of these uh, principles. But what you can see hopefully in this webinar and with Ramona as a classic example is that they do work and you will see that people are using them and you can do the same um, if you go through these courses, if you take this kind of action, uh, if you join us uh, in these webinars. Miss N.A. and Global says, if you want to be ahead before the academic year starts, how do you know which textbooks to buy? I, do, I would presume you would have a prescribed list of textbooks for whatever modules you are signed up for. Um, if not, then speak to somebody who did the same modules the previous year. Uh, those textbooks are unlikely to be vastly different and you could either borrow their textbooks and start reading up those modules before you go into the semester uh, or you could find other sources of um, teaching material about those topics um, or at the very least um, you know phone the lecturer uh, and ask them you know what what book you could get access to if you could borrow one or get one out of the library um, that uh, will give you that uh, teaching and that insights to that module uh, before you actually start um, the year. But I think good intention there um, to get ahead as much as you possibly can. Um, the podcast link is in the chat. You can go look for Cara Demura's um, interview and also an open invitation for you to subscribe to my mailing list and you will get uh, notifications of these webinars and new courses and then also please do check out the student success coach website um lots of links there to all the podcasts uh, the interviews the webinars the courses um etc uh kefense redebe asks how much does the course cost you'd have to just let me know which course you're referring to i've spoken about two courses in this webinar the first one is Mastering Time Management Principles, and that is free access. And I put a link into that, that course there just now. The other course that I've mentioned is uh, there's one on Kanban Principles, and there's one on Beat Procrastination. And, and I teach varying levels of, of Kanban Principles in both of those courses. Um, so, Kafense, if you would like access to the Beat Procrastination course, which includes the Kanban Principles, um, I can provide that to you for free now if you'd like. I can stick it into the chat. Um, but if you just hop onto my Udemy profile or if you go through the website there, um, it'll probably be, I don't know, a couple hundred rand, depending on what Udemy is priced it at or whether they've got a, a sale on at the moment. But the bulk of the focus that we really wanted to achieve was those time management principles. Um, Kanban is that sort of additional extra, if you like, uh, for managing tasks. Once you've got your time management right, uh, if you don't have your time management right, then no system of Kanban or productivity apps and, and all of the apps today of Trello and all of these things are all based on Kanban principles. So you really have to understand the principle before you can use technology or some sort of app or whatever uh, to help you manage um, you know, your, your tasks. So let me know, Kofensi, and I'll certainly help you uh, with that. Okay, hopefully it's a little bit quieter now. Um, okay, let's then just keep going here. 
So there's then further sort of uh, insight into the course and the Kanban teachings that I provide uh, for you to have a look at. And I give a demo of, uh, of a Kanban board uh, on the whiteboard there and taking a series of tasks and, and showing you how you move them from uh, one side to the left so that you can be successful. Uh, and again, any of those tasks could be whatever it is that you're working on uh, in your studies or in any project uh, of your work or life, etc. Okay, um, then again, just in a work context, and you know, this might be even a syndicate that you're busy with in your studies, uh, a group of people that collectively need to work on a range of tasks. I, I give a demo in the uh, more detailed course on Kanban principles about how you can use um, something like Teams or Zoom, um, you know, to manage tasks on a Kanban board uh, collectively uh, as a group. Okay, so uh, Kefense, let me just uh, help you out then with that uh, course very quickly and provide access to that uh, for yourself and for everybody else. Um, I think the noise has subsided here a little bit. Just a little bit of a, a noisy background uh, in the room where I am based at the moment. Uh, so let's just pick up this Kanban course for you and uh, let's make sure that you get maximum value. And uh, Kavense, as I've said to everybody always, just please do make sure that um, you leave a detailed uh, review of the course and a rating. And that way then you know, other people and students like yourself can see what the benefit is that they can get from that course um, if they were to enroll and go through it. So um, I have put the link there to get Kanban organized. Um, and that the lesson that you're looking at now, for example, on the screen is in that course. Uh, where I give you a demo of how to apply uh, electronic Kanban board principles. And when you have a group of people, obviously, if you have a physical uh, whiteboard or area that you manage your uh, tasks, that's not going to be good for other people that are distributed and not available uh, or, or, or able to access um, that Kanban board where you are. Um, Luyando says, I'm good with planning, but I struggle with getting started. So I'm curious to know what are some tools or resources that one can use to help get started with the task they plan. So you like Luyando, I mean, I don't know if you're in the beginning of the course, but your challenge is getting started. And to be honest with you, if you start something, you're, you're ahead of 80% of people, right? Some of the biggest challenges is actually just getting started with something. Because once you start something, uh, you build that momentum, and that actually helps you get going. And I teach that in my academic writing course. A lot of people struggle to just get writing uh, if they've got a writing project. And, um, you know, I, I teach them then just to start writing by saying, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. And then eventually the brain and the fingers start to communicate, and you start to unlock your thought process. But, the, but if you don't write anything, your brain doesn't get unlocked to continue writing. So, Leander, what I would suggest you do is join the Facebook group, and I'll put the link to the Facebook group again just in the chat there quickly, and then in the Facebook group, come in and write a post like Ramona did in, that you saw in this webinar and say, I am going to start this task by this time today. And I can almost guarantee you, Leandro, that you will start that task okay um, and I don't know what it takes for you to start that task I don't know what that task looks like some tasks are easier to start than others however it doesn't actually matter how big the task is you know the Chinese have a wonderful proverb that says the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step so even just making that post in the Facebook group is effectively your own start of doing the task because you've started to get your mindset right in terms of doing that task. So hopefully that is uh, useful for you there. We did speak about cadence earlier and I just wanted to, you know, give you an example here and I do teach this in the course. Um, cadence, you know, when you ride a bike, for example, uh, a cyclist will maintain a regular speed at the pedals and then the gears will change how that speed translates to the, the speed of the wheels turning. And that will be a function of whether they're going uphill or downhill, and it's very much like our own lives. We have busy times. We have much easier times in our lives. And, and that should not change the frequency with which you review your Kanban board. The, the cadence is the regular rhythm and the consistent time of the day or the week or even the month that you review a Kanban board. And you can see there, you know, what's very common in the workplace is to have a stand-up. Uh, people gather around a whiteboard and review that Kanban board. 
and that's cadence. And if we say, guys, we're going to check in every Wednesday at 9 o'clock. If you've got a syndicate project, you work with other people, you need to set a regular time, uh, you know, probably during the week, that you review that Kanban board and, uh, you know, collectively you then look at what tasks are on the Kanban board uh, and how to make progress on them. And again, this is where color coding or even swim lanes works well on a, on a Kanban board um, because you can then make either different rows for different people. So, you know, one row for Bob, one row for Sue, one row for somebody else, or you can color code the tasks. And then you can take each column and say, okay, so in progress for this week, you know, Bob, you have two tasks. Sue, you have three tasks. You know, somebody else has two tasks or whatever it is. And then you can, as a project manager, or somebody that's leading that syndicated project, you can quickly see then what progress uh, you know, you'd need to be monitoring. And then actually when you review those tasks next time, the idea would be then to move those in-progress tasks into the done column. And the burn your boats is built into that because there's the shared accountability within the project team. Um, and when I've done this with, with teams previously, you know, a person thinks quite cl clearly about whether they're going to put a task in that in progress column because they know I'm going to ask them next week uh, or the next time we review the Kanban board whether they've actually uh, completed that task. Leandro, absolute pleasure. Uh, please do leave a rating and a review on both the courses um, that I've shared with you for free access today. And then I did speak about limit work in progress, and this is exactly why. Uh, and we just intuitively know that the person on the left with a very cluttered, busy workspace uh, has not limited their work in progress. They've tried to do a lot of things at the same time, and it just doesn't work. You have to have singular focus on a handful of tasks that are in your in-progress column of your Kanban board. And even if you are trying to focus on a number of tasks, I just fundamentally believe that the state of your working area is going to distract you from even if you have three or four tasks on your list for the day you're going to be distracted by um, a very cluttered desk which uh, you can see there on the left hand side so one of the tasks needs to be clean up my workspace um, you know make sure that i've got the properly focused area like on the right hand side that's conducive to you know focusing on specific things and getting those um, things done but really that's just a visualization of that clarity that you need to have around the specific tasks that you uh, need to get done um, on your kanban board i always tell myself this is summer i always tell myself i'll start with morning exercises push up is two weeks plus 11 start procrastination age okay so summer do me a favor in the chat put the following i promise that i will do my morning exercises tomorrow morning. Don't promise that you're going to do it every day for the next two months because that's that's too big. Just promise us that you're going to do morning exercises tomorrow. That's it. That's all I'm asking you for. I'm not asking you to commit for the next six months because that, that is a big promise. Just do it tomorrow. And again, this is just starting. Because once you've done it tomorrow, then you'll feel, if I did it on Sunday, then I'll have done it two days in a row. If I do it on Monday, then I've done it three days in a row. And they say it takes 40 times to create a habit. If you can do something 40 times, then you've created a habit. And that's really what you want to aim for. So once you've done it once tomorrow, join us in the Facebook group. Commit to doing it on a Sunday. Commit to doing it on Monday. Do it seven times. You've done it a week. And then commit to doing it a full week and a full week and a full week. And then before you know it, you've done it 40 days in a row. And you'll have established a habit. So Summer, I'm inviting you right now um, to make that promise and that commitment um, to everybody uh, in the webinar. Uh, in the chat right now. Up to you. The invitation is there. And then let us know in the Facebook group whether that was um, successful. All right, guys, that's the end. <laughs> okay. Well, Summer, great. I promise I'll do my morning exercise every day. Okay, that's great. But but I want I want you focused on tomorrow. Every day is a big commitment. So so that's great. If that means tomorrow, that's fantastic. But you've promised us that you're going to do it tomorrow and we know that you're not going to let us down. And good luck. Join us in the Facebook group and let us know how you did. Thanks, Summer. All right, guys. We're coming to the end of our webinar. And just a reminder, I'm a student success coach. And I also have a couple of other wonderful coaches uh, in the Facebook group and who often appear on this webinar. So uh, Tracy um, Ashington is uh, one of my co-instructors in a number of my courses and is very active in the Facebook group. 
and is available for career coaching and advice and CVs and uh, mock interviews and many other things. And we've interviewed her a number of times on the webinar. So she's very active in the group and you can take advantage of a lot of her experience uh, in the academic and the working world as well. Um, so Tracy is uh, accessible in the group if you need assistance from her. And in fact, all of the other people that we've interviewed uh, on this webinar and all the other people that are available to you to help you be successful as a student uh, are all accessible uh, through the Facebook group. Uh, then, as I said, we've got a lot of courses on Udemy. I've shared two of those today. Um, please go into both of them, take advantage of those principles, and then from there you can jump onto my uh, profile page and you can see all the other courses that I have available. And to be honest with you guys, any of you want to do any of them, just drop me a note and I'll open them up for you to do for free. Um, and you go in there, leave a good, leave a rating review for me. Honest, objective, um, you know, to, if it is useful for you, mention that in the review and the rating. I'm very happy to, to, to make that available for you guys. Um, I'm here to help you be successful. Um, and those courses provide you with a lot of the more detailed principles and practices and the assignments and the quizzes and the insights to help you be successful. And there's courses on academic writing, there's courses on doing a thesis, on, on um, completing proposals. You know, you can go browse my profile and pick any of them and let me know and I'll, I'll give you access to them. Okay, super. Fatima, absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Uh, really great to have you here. Uh, I've shared the Facebook community. I've shared the podcast um, uh also available on the chat hop in there and if you like audio if you like interviews so Cara for example I've interviewed on the on the podcast and I've interviewed Tracy on the podcast a couple of people that I mentioned the people that you see in the Facebook group uh, we've interviewed on the podcast and you can get more information there Jabulile absolute pleasure um, my fulfillment comes from seeing your success uh, that's my commitment uh, to you guys uh, you know being successful throughout the year but I do I do need you to take action. I do need you um, to apply these principles, um, you know, take action like we've seen just now, somebody promising that they're going to do the exercise tomorrow, um, take action by enrolling in the course, um, take action by focusing on the tasks that are going to make you successful, uh, and you will take action more decisively if you burn your boats. There's no doubt about it. Um, that focuses your mind on the critical things and helps you take that action. All right, and uh, Kifensa, yeah, great. I look forward to seeing you in the course. I'm always active in all my courses. You can message me, you can ask questions, you can introduce yourself on the introduction board. Um, so I look forward to seeing you there and looking forward to seeing you apply these principles and be successful in your studies and in your life. Okay, guys, it's uh, been a great session today. I look forward to seeing you next week. And, of course, in the Facebook group on a regular basis where I also post updates about what the webinars are uh, each Friday at 12 o'clock. All right, have a super weekend. Cheers, everyone.